Dang, needs knives. I'm Jared, my lovely wife Kara is busy. Let's go sharpen this tonto. Well, I first want to work this edge before I move to this secondary edge. So I'm going to first start only sharpening this edge. I won't go past this point. My contact points will be from here to here on the stone. And this is not perfectly straight, so it's not like I can just go straight back and forth. I have to give it a little spin, just a little bit. see we're getting progress but we still have a lot more to do you see we're missing we're back here at the heel and you can tell the thickness changes moving down the blade but you can tell we have a couple more spots still to hit now we're not too worried if this goes a little past because when we get this edge it will we'll meet it up and we'll marry the two together This is a tickle, typical problem you run into, so everything's going great, except for this little heel right here. It's not hitting quite right, and from the factory, that is just from the belt where, you know, they, uh, they, they came in at an angle a little bit when sharpening it, so it's really deep, but, or it also could be a little bit from the grind, but... Most likely from the belt, but anyways, we're going to get it. Just got to keep working at it. I forgot to also say the owner wants me to lay the edge back as well. So if you notice the edge bevel, how tiny it is there and how big we got it over here, we are laying the edge back to get better performance out of this knife. And now I'm finished. I got it all done. There's just a little tiny, tiny bit left right there at the heel, but I have a bunch more stones to go through. One, two, three, four, five in total. So we'll get that as we move along. We're going to switch to this side. Now, one way you can tell to match this side, got some fibers on there, to match this side to this side is to grab it like this and look down the edge. It's a little dirty. Let me wash it really quick. Is to grab it like this and look down the edge and then flip it this way and look down the edge. And you're just going to rock it back and forth and make sure it's even. Now I can see this side needs a little bit more work in this area. Just a little bit, not much at all. So 
get back to it. Because remember, our objective when laying back an edge isn't to just feel for the burr and as soon as we have a burr, we know we're there. It's to pay attention to the entire edge bevel from the exact apex, from the, you know, the tip of the edge to the back of the edge bevel, to the top of where we're sharpening. And you want to make sure your grip pattern is nice and even and is, goes from... the edge to the top of it nice and evenly all the way up and down. Now that we've gotten both sides, the grip pattern's nice and even. Both sides are nice and even. We got a burr on this side now because we just got done sharpening this side, so the burr is on the opposite side. Now it's time to work on the secondary edge. So I'm going to hold my same angle from this point. So I'm going to get my angle, lay it on this point right here, not right here like this but like this where I'm lifting this edge off of the stone now and I'm putting the tip of where I want this edge to be right there on the stone and I'm going to work my way across the stone and lift at the same time. Now for this type of tanto a lot of times you want to do a convex edge for this for this top kind of like um, the, the Norseman. If you guys know the, the, the Norseman knife, it has a V-grind on this edge, on the recurved straight part, and then on the, the secondary edge, it has a convex edge. Now, you don't have to. You can do a V-grind up here or a convex edge. A convex edge will be a little stronger. Now, another way you can do it is you can go across the stone and lift to the tip like I'm doing right there or you can kind of so the difference is, is me going like this or I can also go like this a little bit and I'll show that right now where I just both can be fine you just you know want to keep looking at your edge and if you're not good at one of the directions, then stick with the other one. And this sort of looks like after just a couple passes. Obviously, we have a lot more work to do, but that's after a couple passes. a good time to use the middle of the stone and these parts right here because right here and right here are the most used part of the stone so any chance you get to use this part this part and this part you want to Basically going across the stone like this and lifting to the tip, dropping back down, lifting to the tip. Just take a look at it.
you see this angle right here where the grind is a grind line right here which separates this angle from this angle it goes like this down to here we want to get close to that because that's where this angle changes to do the straight line it starts right here it starts back farther than normal but what's normal right so we got the burr all the way across the angle's really good the bevel's done now let's switch sides now we will do this side same thing just the opposite side Now, if one side, if you're working at it and one side's not matching the other, you don't, it's not that big of a deal. Um, you want to correct it or start correcting it as soon as possible by adjusting your angle. So if one side is bigger, then you want to raise that angle. Raising meaning if this is flat and this side is bigger then that means i'm laying down too flat i need to raise my angle a little bit if it's the front then you need to raise it up just a little bit raise your angle up if it's um if you know one side is smaller than the other meaning the whole bevel then you might want to just slightly raise one side and slightly drop another to even it out but see what's working. Do a couple passes or a few passes, um, raising the angle on one side and see if it looks correct. Because then what you can do, as you move further, you can stick to that angle. The steel will get removed and then in the end it will be correct. But, you know, you want to try to, you know, catch it, um, you know, as you move along and then, you know, as you remove the steel... You, you know, you can adjust it accordingly to match. Basically, whichever side you like more, that's the side you're going to want to match it to. Or whichever angle you like, you know, better. Sometimes it's easier to just lower the angle on the side that has the smaller bevel. But sometimes that bevel may be a little too big, so you might want to adjust the bigger side and just remove the steel you know, up to the point to where it's back to that angle. I did a vi whole video on that subject on how to correct uneven bevels. So just so you know, in my playlist, I do have a video on how to fix uneven bevels. And, you know, if you want to, you can watch it. And it helps you learn to, you might sometimes want to take it off from the opposite side that's messed up to correct that, uh, that apex or that angle all right okay now that we've gotten uh, um all the edges done this edge this edge this edge and this edge and we got a matching up on both sides and this point to this point lines up on both sides now we want to go through all our progressions the exact same doing the same thing as we move along and then when we get to our last stone we will marry the edges together which is basically just the same thing we're doing. It'll just be the deburring process, but we'll catch back up then. I'm going to finish this, and I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, so now marrying your edge. We're on our last stone. I've already uh, worked this stone, and 
I'm pretty much done marrying the edge, but at, after this, I want to um, talk just a little bit about this because I did run into a couple issues, and we'll talk about it after this, you know, this part. So when I was mar when, when marrying your edge together, you know, to create one point, you basically just go around doing single passes, and if you see like um, where it's not matching up, like evenly you can work the one side the one part to bring it forward a little bit more or this part back a little bit more but you can also just do your single passes all the way around about uh five to ten times a piece so i'll just do single passes And I'll do that, like I said, about five times on each side. And it'll help even this these two edges together right there at that pin point. And it'll also help deburr any burr you have before you go to the strap. All right, so it's all finished up. I did wind up having to do this in two sessions. Um, I got a lot of fatigue from the first um, day. I, you know, had sharpened other knives earlier in the day, and I was really fatigued. My fingers were wore out and cramping, and it's not smart to continue working on a knife. If you're frustrated, if you're sore, if you're cramping, just, just call it a quits. And, you know, in all reality, I shouldn't have probably even started doing it the next day. I should have waited a couple of days um, just because, you know, I had, you know, stuff going on. And and then also, you know, because I was cramped up, I should have gave my hands a break for a couple of days. But either way, I got it finished up and it looks really good. Um, there is a couple little things with this knife to kind of make it a little bit more difficult. One, it's very thick behind the edge. Another thing is that this secondary grind up here, because it's uh, flat to here, and then to here, it goes down. Um, but this part of the grind here and here, it, they don't, they don't match up. So that's why this acute tip isn't acute. It would be acute if it was over here, but this part of the edge stops there. Do you know what I mean? So this grind ends up here while this part of the grind ends back farther. So that's why it's not going to be as acute as, say, you know, a, a regular, like, say, American Tonto or even some other Japanese Tontos. And RWL 34, I noticed, I've, I, you know, I've done it a bunch of times. It's the same thing Damas, that's what Damas Steel is made out of. So I've done Damas Steel a few times, I've done RWL 34, and I found that sometimes it takes a really good polish, but then I found sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes, you know, maybe it's the, the, the knife company or the heat treater or whatever, but sometimes it does really good and it has a really sticky sticky edge after a polish but then sometimes they just don't take a good polish um i know a lot of people like to sharpen them i think sometimes it has to do with the company or the you know where it came from or who he treated it you know so on and so forth anyways i think this would have done really good at a low grit um but it still came out pretty sticky you know it's not bad um I'll grab a piece of paper here in a second. Um, it's still very sharp, but at a low grit, I think it would have uh, possibly had a little bit better performance out of the edge. Now, that being said, this isn't a work knife. This isn't, you know, your recycling knife or your strap cutting knife. This is more of an art piece. That's really cool. So I think having a polished edge is fine on it. You know, it's not uh, like you're looking for that high performance Um you know, out of your edge with this one, but it looks really good. And it looks pretty good. I'm not going to say it looks really good because there were a couple spots that, you know, I'm not the happiest with, you know, I mean, I think it's still a good, good work, but like the tip doesn't match up perfectly from one side to the other. One side is a little bit bigger. Um, I noticed there were a couple grinds from one side to the other side that were a little bit different. It happens, you know, it's just knife steals, you know, it's just stuff you have to work with, you know, and so I tried to match them up as good as possible, 
And, you know, all in all, it came out pretty good. We'll take a close look at it if we can, and then we'll test it on a piece of paper. And then I want to talk about marrying the edge again. Uh, But it's pretty decent. Um, anyways, so let me grab a piece of paper. We'll cut it, and then I want to talk about marrying the edge. Here's a receipt. Let me check that front part. Got some wrinkles in the paper. You can see the transition's really good between both edges. That was my fault. But very nice. Nice and sharp. Uh, it just it could have came out a little stickier, but that's got to do with the steel itself. Now, when marrying your edge. You know, you're basically trying to blend it in at the point of contact between the two grinds. Now, when you do it, like I said, you can, you know, just do single passes on each angle all the way around, you know, five to ten times, however long it takes. And it'll also help deburr it. Now, there might be a couple times where you might have to do, like, say, three passes right here. And then just one pass there. And then come over here and just do one pass, one pass. And then three passes here. One pass, one pass. You know, so you want to just look at where they're lining up. And if this edge, right, starts backing up a little bit. Because maybe you worked it just a little um, too long. Or, you know, you, uh, you know, maybe had something to do with your angle. And maybe this edge is leaning back farther on this side than it is on this side so to fix that you just go back down to this flat portion and work that a little bit you're gonna have to do that with tantos that's the point you know to kind of blend these two together so just know that you know you can do extra passes on either portion any of the portions to make them match up you know the point is to get them to match up but all in all it looks pretty good and um, I will be reviewing this knife soon. I'm going to have to take it apart and clean it now. So there you guys go. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.